Hey YouTube, I want to make a short, well, it's probably not going to be short, but I want to make a video showing you how to create your own custom dungeons for Dungeons and Dragons or Pathfinder or whatever type of RPG tabletop system that you're using. And it can be very simply done in about 30 minutes using a program called GIMP, which, you, uh, which I'll show you, and Google Chrome. So we're going to start in Google Chrome and we're going to open a new Google Chrome window and you're going to type in RPG tile set. Now what this is for is the old RPG style makers where you can make your own you know, RPG games. And you're going to go to images and you're, you need to create a database of these different tile sets because you'll use these to create your dungeons. And for example this tile set here has grass tiles and rocks and stones and different things and this one over here has trees. Uh, this is a huge one which I have already downloaded. It's got all kinds of neat things on it. But for the purposes of this video, we're going to choose this one. And you can see this has what I would call placeables and furniture. We've got beds, barrels, tables, flags, all kinds of things that you can throw in a dungeon environment to kind of make it neat, fill it up. So we're going to view the image, and what you want to do is right-click and save the image as. Now, I'm going to show you my database and what it looks like. So we're going to go to the desktop, games folder, and D&D. Here you see I've got character sheets, different collections, D20 images, dungeons that I've pre-made, pawns, and a lost mine of Fendelver, which is a campaign I'm currently running, and tile sets. And within the tile sets I've created a system of folders for animals, buildings, characters, doors, furniture, placeables, and trees. So let's go to the placeables. Now you can see I've already got the file in there, so I don't need to save it a second time. But you would need to do that, so you kind of have to do some homework ahead of time and create a file data bank like that where you're going to put your different images. Now there are all kinds of images that are available on um, on Google. So this one for example has looks like a flag mast that you could use in a boat. Um, this one's got boat parts. You can see here's different parts, cracks and pillars and there really is almost an unlimited variety of things that you could use for RPG gaming that you can create custom dungeon images for and the, this only really works great if you're using 3D virtual tabletop which I will show you at the end of this video. So now let's jump straight into our program called GIMP. It's G-I-M-P. It's a extremely amazing program that is free to download on the internet. It's similar to Adobe Photoshop. What we're going to do is we're going to create a new file and we want to make it in inches. So we're going to click this little box to change it from pixels to inches. And the best files for 3D virtual tabletop that I found are 20 by 20 or 40 by 20. And those are the largest ones that you can create. So this is going to be our dungeon mat. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our pencil tool, which you can see here, and our brushes, which are down here. And these are going to be very important because we're going to keep coming back to these later on. Now brush size of 20 is much too large. You can see that big fat line, so we're going to undo that. We want a brush size of around 8, and this is entirely up to you. The brush size ultimately doesn't matter in the end, and you'll see why in a moment. But we're going to start with our first dungeon room, and we're going to make it a square. Okay, It doesn't have to be perfect. Mine's ugly looking, but it's, it's going to work out just fine. And then uh, each room, you kind of want to make corridors. So we're going to put a hallway here. Now, if you have the, the Dungeon Master Guide for D&D 5th Edition, it gives you some guidelines for creating these little dungeons for your characters to run around in. And uh, dice rolls and things that you can do. We're just going to design this on the fly just to show you how quick and easy you can make little custom dungeons for your characters to explore without putting too much thought into it. So I'm just randomly drawing kind of whatever here. I don't have any sort of a plan for this. I'm just sort of going with the flow. Now, uh, one thing that you do want to try to include in these little dungeons that you are creating for your characters, um, you know, think about your rogues. They like to find secret doors and traps and things, so traps are good in hallways, and uh, you can always add secret doors here and there later for, for your characters to find and discover treasure rooms and stuff like that, doors that are locked maybe. Um, so keep that kind of keeps it fresh for those type characters. All right, so we've got this big long hallway that goes down into some doors, and let's have it come across. And we're gonna have it end here in like a circle, a big circular room. So we're gonna put 
this big sort of semicircular room there. And um, now off of this circular room, let's add those secret passages that we talked about earlier, and we'll just throw in a couple of them here for our rogue characters to find. So these, these would be things that uh, maybe the doors are locked and they have to use their lockpicking skills, or it's a secret wall and they have to be able to find it. Who knows? But there it is. Um, let's do something with these hallways here. So let's make a small little square room here, and let's have a hallway coming off of it and coming down. bubble. Let's have this hallway come. Hmm, what do we want to do here? I know. Let's have it come down and let's make some cells. Like prison type cells um, that our characters can open the gates to and search the the corpses or whatever. The prisoners. Corpses or whatever. You know, we'll, we'll create that when we decide the campaign statistics. So let's have this little path here kind of swerve around and we'll, we'll do another pretty large room we'll put it right here okay and then off of that room because once again I want to give some love to the rogue characters we're gonna throw a secret door or passage in here maybe some type of a treasure room and we'll throw something in here uh, maybe some type of a treasure room as well so there we go there's a the dungeon and you're thinking, well, gosh, that looks like child's play, and it sure does. But we're going to dress it up. So the next thing you need to do once you've got the dungeon made is you're going to grab your eraser tool, and you're going to make it a little larger. 20 is, is pretty good. And we're going to go in here, and we're going to open these corridors between the rooms. Um, and you'll see why we need to do that and why that's going to be important here in a minute. So we're going to just quickly erase these corridors and this is the 30 minute dungeon this is the quick and easy dungeon in 30 minutes if, you know if you've been a lazy DM and you've got a group coming or you want to throw in something for a group that's uh, kind of unplanned or they head off in a direction that <laughs> that you didn't plan for them to go and now you've got to you got to throw dungeons in there for them this is a way to do it so here's our dungeon the next thing that we need to do is go into that database that we created. So I'm going to do that now on my computer. And you're going to see me open up my database. Now within my database, I'm going to have different tile sets that I can use. And let's just take a look at some of those tile sets. So in this upper corner, we see a preview. This is like the sides of buildings and rooftops. And this is a, a neat passageway that has a railroad or train track going through it. This is a dungeon floor. Now, this is the one that I typically like to use for dungeons. I use it a lot. Um, it's a really nice file. I'm going to open that one. We're going to take it. And you can take a look at it. It's got spider webs and a broken, out of place tile. And this was found for free on Google Chrome. Um, you can just copy and use it. Now, you can't sell these things, but for use with your group, perfectly fine to do. So, we're going to edit and copy. Now, this is, if you can do this, you can make these dungeons. You're going to edit and copy the image jump over into your dungeon, grab your paint tool, go to pattern fill, and in the upper left hand corner on GIMP is whatever you copied last, whether it's a pattern or a pencil, you can see pencil brush, there's that floor tile, or a paint brush, there's the floor tile. We're going to use the paint bucket and we're going to fill the entire area in here with this paint. So there it is. Now it looks like I made a mistake. So we're going to jump back in and fix it. I didn't open up this corridor right here. So let's do that. And now we will fill it in. So there it is. Now we have a dungeon with a nice looking floor. And what about all the white area? Well, what I like to do, and the reason I do my outline in black, is I'll then go back to my foreground color and I will fill in the whole area with black. Now, what you get is this nice dungeon. Now, you can go, once you get to this point, and uh, add walls around everything to make it look nicer. And um, I'll just open one for you that I didn't do myself, but it's uh, pretty, pretty darn cool looking. Um, so there you go. Here's a dungeon, and you can see he's put this little wall pattern all around the edges of his dungeon. Um, now, you can do that. 
but it takes a lot more work. So we're not going to do that in this video. This is the quick and easy version. All right, so here we are with the dungeon, and now it looks pretty plain. So let's add some life to it. So we're going to go and open those tile sets that we talked about earlier. And we'll do... Um, I've got one that's got just a whole bunch of stuff on it. There it is. It's a huge file. It's got tons of stuff on it. Um, we're going to zoom in on it, and you'll see all of these placeables. And there they are. So I've got barrels and pots and just, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. Armor, there's there's just, just random things that you can fill and populate your dungeon with. Now, I don't have a story to go with this dungeon, but as I begin to build it, maybe I'll start to create that. And so as I'm doing this, uh, this dungeon on the fly. Well, I'll kind of narrate some of what maybe I would have my character players doing in this dungeon. So, first of all, let's take some of these wine casks or wine barrels. I like to use these. So we're going to copy those, jump over here into our dungeon, grab our pencil tool, which I have already changed the brush to the upper left-hand corner, which is the last thing you have copied. So now that I've done that, I can basically place these little barrels wherever I want and their sizes are going to be determined by this gauge. So right now it's a size 20. Well, I'll just show you. Make a huge one. So there's a huge one. Obviously it's too big. Um, but just to give you an idea, it can be made pretty much any size and I want to make it to the size of probably one square, whatever I, I'm going to make my dungeon squares out to be and I think that's a pretty decent size. So Basically, just to create some atmosphere within the dungeon, I'm going to just put some of these barrels in a few random corners, like so, just to give the dungeon a feel of, you know, that it has something in it other than just nothing. Let's make this room like a wine cellar. So maybe we can have some kind of an encounter in here, and we've got a whole bunch of wine barrels that our rogues can hide behind or our rangers can jump up on top of and fight from. So we're just going to create a whole big row of wine buckets. And I don't know, let's throw a couple in here. And at, once again, this is I'm just making this. I have no plans for it. I'm just throwing something together in 30 minutes as quickly as I can. Now seeing the same image over and over is pretty boring. So let's go back in and grab a different type of barrel. So let's grab this row here of barrels. Make sure we get the whole image. And we're going to edit and copy. And once that's done, once I jump back into my dungeon, I already have that image in, on my pencil. So I can just stamp them in. Now it's important that you only click once. If you click and hold, you get this. And obviously that looks pretty strange. Um, so it's just like dropping stamps. You're just going to stick them on. And there it's going to create a little bit of randomness to the dungeon. And I'll just stick some here because this is that wine cellar we talked about and you kind of just want to place these th and th they basically just give it a feel uh, you know that there's something other than just one image so now let's grab some of these broken pots they're kind of cool um, so we're going to take the broken pot same thing just copy it jump over to your image grab your pencil and it looks a little bit big it is a little bit big, so let's shrink it. That's a better size. And we'll just stick some broken pots in, kind of randomly in the corners of our dungeon. And once again, you don't have to plan this out too great. You just, you're just going to stick stuff in, in the rooms to you know, fill them up and make them feel like there's stuff there. Okay, so now we have some of that. Let's see if there's anything else in here that we want. How about we throw in... Um, some treasure in those secret rooms that our rogues are going to be trying to enter. I'm going to copy the little gold image, and the gold pile looks about the right size. So this is going to be a secret room. We'll throw some treasure in there and there, a little bit in this corner, and some in there, some down here. Um, maybe one of these prison cells has some gold in it, and I think that'll do for treasure. Let's jump back over. Ooh, here's a necklace. Um, Maybe we can create this as an item that our characters can find um, that gives them a plus to their wisdom or their intelligence, something along those lines. So let's throw that in a dungeon room that's gonna, we're going to make kind of harder to find. So um, 
let's throw it in this one so it's in there and how about some armor so maybe we've got some clerics with us and they need some new chain mail or scale mail or plate mail armor we're gonna take this thing here we're gonna copy it and we're gonna stick it in that room that's gonna be difficult to open so there's a an, an extra added bonus in that particular room okay now looking at my images that I have here and like I said I don't have a particular plan for this dungeon other than that I'm showing you guys how to make your own but I like this dragon statue it's it's intriguing me so I'm gonna grab it and we're gonna make this the point of the dungeon so uh, the story goes that you met someone in town for some reason you have to flesh it out and they have asked you to retrieve some ancient rubies that they found in a manuscript that have some kind of ability or they need for something and they're embedded into a sculpture an ancient sculpture of a dragon and so you know the whereabouts but the ruins are too dangerous and you send the adventures into the ruins to collect the ruby eyes from the dragon statue so there it is um, so we've got a dragon statue now um, if it's some kind of ancient ruins it should have other things than barrels in it so let's open up a file that has some furniture of some type let's see I think under placeables I have a furniture there we go and um, it's been sitting for a while so it's got lots of dust on it so let's take let's take this table it's all dusty looking and we're gonna copy that and it's the same thing over and over copy grab your pencil check the size and the size looks good so let's throw a, a table there and let's put one in this room and let's throw one no, let's not throw one in there but let's, let's put one in here so we'll put a table in there and there we go so let's also grab this this thing here it's got like a book on it it's kind of cool um, let's grab it I like it so we're going to copy that, and maybe the book has some text that leads our characters into their next dungeon adventure. Um, so it, it helps continue along the storyline. And that book stand is way too big. So that looks good. Let's stick it back here. Oh, it's stuck right in the middle of the room. So there it is. And that's that. So now, maybe we want to create a puzzle around one of these pianos. Um, or organ or whatever that'd be kind of cool wouldn't it so let's grab one let's grab this gold colored one and let's throw it in the dungeon as well and maybe the characters have to play a certain set of notes on the piano or on the organ to get it's about the right size to unlock the door to the main chamber and we can make that available to them through this book so let's grab another one of these books and we're going to copy it and let's slap it in this room so there it is so this will be the this will say you know you have to play C B E A on the organ and it will automatically unlock the room to the dragon chamber with the dragon eyes so there we go so see we've made a dungeon a hundred percent on the fly um, now it's still not completely done we do need to throw the doors in and there's other placeables um, one of them I kinda I would like to see some skeletons in in here so let's open up I think I have a tile that has skeletons on it so let me see if I can find it I think this is the one it is okay so let's grab this little skeleton right there and maybe that's gonna be the enemy that they face upon entering the room with the dragon they have to fight off a bunch of skeletons so we're just gonna put some skeletons around in a circle to represent that and then let's make some smaller more atmospheric type skeletons and we're just gonna kinda make like a little skeleton pile in the corner there and we'll throw a few kind of maybe somebody over there and we'll stick one in the corner just to kind of fill the room with something um, 
fill the dungeon with some interesting, some down the hallways, and there were other types of skeletons. So let's let's grab this little stack here. It's got some other things on it, and let's stick them in just kind of random. Oh, can't forget about the gel cells. Let's throw some skeletons in there. Um, <coughs> Stick another one in there. Yeah, we'll stick one in here. Let's see, is there anything else that it looks like we could want to use? How about this stack of treasure? There's a sword and a helmet in the stack. So we could create uh, magical items that our characters can find. And um, we already have one pretty good treasure room in here. So let's make a second one. How about in this room there? So we're going to bring its size up a bit, and boop, there we go, big treasure pile, it's got a sword and a helmet in it for our characters to find. Next thing that we want to do is put in our doors, so we're going to go back to the database that we created using Google, we're going to go to our doors, and you can see I've got a bunch of doors and windows, various types, but I'm going to choose this one just to make things easy, and we're going to make all of our doors these like stone doors, the little thingies in them. So now uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take our pencil and we're going to place the doors. And you can see that door is way bigger than the room and that's that's okay. It doesn't have to be exactly the same size. Um, just as long as there's an image there showing that there is a door that the characters need to try and overcome in some way. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and place all of these long shaped doors in the different areas where they need to go. So we're just going to go just like this. And then the gel cells, um, we're just going to go like this to place these stone doors. Now we could put bars. There's there's bars in the thing, but we're, you know, like I said, throwing this together quickly. Um, this one's going to be a problem. You notice the door doesn't fit right. So what we're going to do is we're going to edit paste as a new layer and the reason for that is once we paste it as a new layer we are able to at that point uh, manipulate that layer so let's find out where it went upper corner so there it is we're going to use the move tool we're going to move it down to this area and now that it's a layer I have the option of rotating it so you can see I can grab this little dial and just rotate this thing all over we want to rotate it to fit there it is, and we're going to slide it into place just like that. And that does all of the vertical up and down doors. Now let's do our horizontal doors. So our horizontal dungeon door looks like this. And we're going to copy that. It's, once again, same process over and over again. Copy, grab your pencil, and slap them in. So let's uh, pop a door in here. And we need a door, now let's put it here, here, we need a door here, we need a door here. Alright, so we have our, all of our rooms have door, oh, nope, missed one, treasure room has a door, okay. So all of our room now rooms now have their doors put on them. Now, alternatively, instead of using these long boxes to represent your doors, you could edit, paste as a layer, your doors, which will allow you to grab them, and in a place where this would this long door is, I could rotate this image 90 degrees, roughly, and I could drag it over, um, but the reason I don't do that is it kind of looks odd, um, so I like to use the long, the long door images to represent the doors. Alright, so now we've done our doors, we've done our treasures, we have our maps, um, we could use some type of stairs leading the characters in. Not sure that I have anything, but let's take a look anyway and see. I don't think I've created a, f a tile set for stairs yet, and that's probably going to be something that I'm going to need to throw in here later. As a matter of fact, let's just go ahead and show you guys how 
to get your own. Oh, well, that kind of has stairs, but not really. Well, that has stairs on it. Hmm. So these are all a bunch of tile sets that I've yet to go through and organize. But that one has stairs, so let's open it. And look at that, that's pretty cool. A spiral staircase leading down. And what we're going to do is copy it. We're going to do the same thing we've done for every other thing. But let's make the spiral st Oh, that's probably about the right size. So there we go. There's a spiral staircase leading down into our dungeon. So our characters find the ruins on top of the surface world, and they come down into this dungeon, and here they are. Now, there's no need to place monsters or anything like that, because we're going to use 3D Virtual Tabletop from here. So what I'm going to do, I want to save this file. And I like to save it first as an XCF, which is the way GIMP reads f files. And this is going to allow me to go back and re-edit the folder if I ever need to, or to turn it into something else if I need to. So I've got a dungeon folder. Save it there. The next thing that you want to do is you want to export it. This is how you can get it into your tablet uh, for your Android or iPhone, and allow you to use it in Virtual Tabletop. So let's call it YouTube uh, Dungeon. And we're going to save it. And we want to save it at a compression level of 5. That keeps it small enough that it fits on the tablet without taking all your tablet's memory. So now that we've done that, we're going to jump over to our tablet and I'm going to show you guys how to use uh, 3D Virtual Tabletop to turn this into something that's really, really cool. Alright, so I'll see you guys on the other side. On my Okay, so now we're going to open our 3D Virtual Tabletop on our Android device, which is here. And basically, um, once we're in, into the program, we can import the dungeon. Now, this is the dungeon that we created on GIMP. And as you can see, here's the, the piano that we put down and the, the big room with the barrels. And come over here, and there's a room with the dragon, with the little gemstones, and all that stuff is there. And you can see it's laid out in a different format. And basically, how we get to this point, you're going to go into um, the little symbol on the top there that I clicked on and you hit the plus sign. And once you hit the plus sign it opens up all the images on your Android device and we have already imported the image so you can see it here next to the skeleton so I'm going to touch that and what it'll do is it'll pull it up in the map making program in 3D Virtual Tabletop. And once you're there you're going to set your miniature base size which is done by the squares. If you notice in the left hand corner of the screen in the preview there's these squares and you can see the squares are much too large so all you do is you use this to make them larger or smaller and since this dungeon needs to be about either 6x6 or 4x4 we're going to shrink those squares down to fit the dungeon so you see now it fits in that little cell with the skeleton and then you would save it and once you had done all that then you get this so here's our dungeon YouTube dungeon here's what it looks like so the next step is to uh, import your miniatures. Now the way I use this is I use Miracast and I send it to my 3D television, my 47 inch television and uh, it's not 3D and it um, my players that are playing with me that day can see their pawns on the screen and see the dungeon and I like to stay zoomed in tight because at the moment there's no way of blocking off areas that characters shouldn't see. However, 3D Virtual Tabletop is going to come up with an update soon that will allow that to happen. So let me take you to the next step, which is how to create miniatures. Okay, so now to create a miniature, you're going to touch this little man figure in the upper right hand corner, and it's going to pull up the miniatures screen. Now the miniatures that come with the set, when you download the program, and the program is free by the way, um, you see where it says included, you get all of these guys here, and there are a bunch of miniatures of all different varieties that you can use with this program and uh, highly highly recommend the program however there might be something that isn't in here that you want and off the top of my head I can't think of exactly what it would be but let's go to um, we'll go 
these are the miniatures that I've created. We'll go to Google and we'll create us a custom miniature so you can see how easy it is to do. So, uh, well, there's a skeleton image that I created that miniature with a uh, miniature with previously, but let's type in Hellhound and uh, let's type in uh, Dungeons and Dragons to see if there's any images out there of Hellhounds from the Dungeons and Dragons set that we could use. So it's now searching for us. Let's look at the images that we pulled up. And yeah, there's a couple there. If there's anything really cool that jumps out. Ooh, ooh, there's a couple of them that I really like. I'll, I'm gonna go with this one. It's uh, brightening. And basically, all you're gonna do is visit the image, view image, same thing we did on the computer, except you're gonna do it on your tablet. There it is. Let's take a look at this image. And we're going to save it. Just like that. Now we jump back into 3D Vertical Tabletop. So here's 3D Virtual Tabletop. It's reloading. We're going to go back to our miniatures screen. And we're going to hit the plus sign. And we're going to find that miniature or that image that we saved. And there it is at the top of the screen. So I'm going to touch it. And it's going to load it into the miniature creation. So there it is. It's creating a portrait of the miniature. Let's call it... Um, giant hellhound and we're going to give it a base size of two so it'll be at least two by two squares it's going to be quite large and we're going to save it all right so now we've created our own custom hellhound miniature which i'm going to drop in on the map so there he is and it's pretty neat there's a couple other little things you can do here um there he is. I'm going to move them all around. Big giant hellhound for our characters to encounter. Now, um, we're going to drop our character miniatures in. So let's choose uh, this ranger. And we're going to take this cleric person. And let's grab the wizard too. Now, basically the way that I would start this is I'd place them all on the stairs. And I would tell them as a DM... You're slowly uh, coming down the stairs, and uh, before you enter the room, what do you want to do? Maybe the character will say, well, we're going to sneak, so I would do a, a check of some kind to see if they're able to sneak and see the hellhound before he sees them. Maybe they're successful, and I say, you notice a giant creature in the room, and you're not sure what it is. It's got smoke coming off its body, and it's breathing fire. So someone would do some type of a check again, uh, and then maybe they'd find out that it's a hellhound, and I'll, I'll give them some basic stats on it. And they'll attack it. And all of this is up on the television screen, so they can see what's going on. Um, and then I can move the pawns individually for each character as the battle ensues. You know, people can jump on top of barrels, or they can jump over on a crate, and uh, maybe the hellhound can't get to them because the stuff's in the way. That's all stuff that you create as, uh, as you're playing. Now, I just removed the Hellhound, and to do that, to remove a miniature, all you do is you just click on it and hold, and you hit the minus button, just like that. Very easy. Now, as you can see here, um, it's made a rather interesting dungeon. We've got doors that the characters will have to do their checks on to see if they're able to lockpick or whatnot. Um, and yes, they can see the treasure piles, so they know there's treasure in there, and they can see the books. Um, but... At the moment, they're working on fixing that. So the guy who's created this program is working on an upgrade called the Fog of War, which the player characters will only be able to see what their little pawns would normally see. So all of this stuff would be hidden, which is going to be really nice, and I can't wait for that to happen. But at the moment, I just try to stay tight to the map, and uh, it works perfect for us. And it, it gives us a sense of space so our characters know where they are. Uh, it's an absolute amazing program, highly recommend it, and as you can see you can create awesome dungeon in just a few minutes.